What's up everyone, it's Yuval here, and I'm usually behind the camera, but for this video, I just wanna show you guys how to color grade in DaVinci Resolve and how to bring your entire timeline from Premiere Pro into DaVinci so you can keep editing in Premiere like you're used to, but do the color grading itself in DaVinci. But before we jump in, I just wanna let you guys know that there is an amazing giveaway waiting for you at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around. But now, let's jump in. Okay, so we're in Premiere Pro, and now what I wanna do is take this timeline and bring it into Resolve, color grade it there, and then bring it back into Premiere. So what we need to do is simplify our timeline. So we are going to delete any graphics and we're just gonna put all of our footage on one video track. Um, always duplicate your original timeline so you always have a backup. And on the duplicate timeline, this is where I'm going to delete everything. So I'm gonna start doing that. Just delete everything that I don't need. And actually we're gonna bring everything into the V1 video track, so the first video track. So after deleting all the unnecessary layers, you should end up with something that looks like this. You can see I have all of my footage here on one track, on the first video track. And if I scroll through, you can see it's only the footage, there are no graphics and no additional layers that I don't really need. Um, you can even go ahead and delete the audio if you want, but I'm just gonna keep it that way. So the thing about working in Premiere and then coloring in Resolve is that a lot of the effects in Premiere Pro actually won't translate well into Resolve and they can cause some problems. So if you have a lot of effects on your footage, uh, one thing you can do is just render the clip with the effects and then replace it in the timeline. So essentially the effects are baked in on the footage um, another solution you can do is just render out your entire timeline as one really high quality video file and then you could bring that into Resolve and just make all of the cuts um, there. But for this tutorial I'm just going to show you the simple way which is exporting an XML. So what I'm going to do now is go into File and we're going to go into Export and Export Final Cut Pro XML. I know it says Final Cut, but it will work in Resolve, don't worry. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna load and I'm gonna tell it where to save. So I've opened a new folder called Color and a new folder called Form Premiere, just to keep everything organized because we're gonna have the same thing from Resolve going back into Premiere. So just to keep things organized and nice. So I'm gonna hit Save and it's gonna render out our XML file. I'm gonna click OK. And now we're gonna open DaVinci Resolve and open our timeline over there. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve and what I'm gonna do is go into File. I'm gonna go into Import Timeline, Import XML, and I'm gonna to navigate to where I saved the XML file. It's gonna open up this dialog box. And we're pretty much gonna keep it the same. So we're gonna click OK. And now you can see we have our exact timeline from Premiere in DaVinci, which is pretty amazing. We have all of our cuts and we even have the audio here, so it's pretty great. And by the way, you can download DaVinci Resolve for free. Um, it's not the full version, but it can pretty much do like 80% of what you need. So especially when you're starting out, this is perfectly fine. Um, you can download it just from the official Blackmagic site. So everything I'm gonna do here today um, works perfectly with the free version. So we're currently on the edit panel. You can see it down here. And we wanna go into color and start doing some color grading. So you can see we have all of our clips down here. And I'm gonna start with this clip. So the way you color grade in the Vinci Resolve is by using nodes. And you can see here we have this node and the way it works is it's kinda similar to layers in Photoshop. Um, only it's going horizontal and not vertical. So if I create a new node by pressing Alt S on Windows, um, then essentially this node uh, would kind of be like a layer above our first layer. So on the first node, usually what you would do is some noise reduction. Um, now on the free version of Resolve, there is no noise reduction option. That's only in the studio version. So I'm just gonna pretend that we did some noise reduction and I'm gonna keep that as the first node because that's what you would usually do. And now I'm going to create a new node and that node I'm gonna keep for white balance and exposure. You always wanna do that right in the beginning. That's when you'll have uh, the most control. So what I want to do now is take my log footage and transform it into a Rec. 709 color space. Now you can see everything is 
pretty flat on here. Um, there's not a lot of color and not a lot of contrast. And that's because it's shot on a log profile picture. So a lot of the times people would just think um, you can just take the curves and you know start bring things down, bring the highlights up, um, you know pump in some saturation, and that would be their um, Rex 09 transformation. And um, sometimes that maybe could work, but that's not a really accurate way of doing things. It might create some problems for you, like artifacts, and when you create a few more nodes, uh, you'll see it starts piling up and the image starts breaking down. So it all starts here with the transformation into Rex 709. You want to do it right. So I'm going to show you two methods in which you can transform into Rex 709 and do it the right way. So um, the first one is just by using Rex 709 LUT. Now, uh, every camera shoots a different type of log, and some cameras even have a few log options. There's S-Log2 and S-Log3 if you're shooting on Sony. Um, there is Blackmagic Film on Blackmagic. There's C-Log for Canon. So essentially, we have a bunch of different log profile pictures, and they're not all the same. So you want to make sure you're using the right LUT for your camera. So um, there's luckily a lot of LUTs um, built into Resolve. So if we go up here into the LUTs panel, um, you can see we have a bunch of options. We have RE, um, DJI, Blackmagic Design. So um, our footage was shot on the RE Alexa. So I'm going to go into RE and you can see we have RE Alexa to Rec 709. So I'm going to just drag that. I'm going to put it over our node or you could just double click it. And straight away you can see this looks pretty good. So that's the first way of doing things. So now let's take a look at the second method you can do this. So I'm going to delete this node and I'm going to create a new node and I'm going to call it CST, which is Color Space Transform. So we want to go into our effects, open effects over here, and we're going to search for Color Space Transform. I'm going to take that um, onto my node and now you can see we have a bunch of options over here. So um, for the input color space, I'm going to choose RE Alexa. For the input gamma, I'm going to go for RE Log C. And of course, you need to make um, the same for whichever camera you're using. So if it's Canon, you're going to go Canon and then um, C Log. So it depends on your camera. And for the output color space, I'm going to go into Rec 709 and also Rec 709 for output gamma. And now in the tone mapping, I'm going to go into luminance mapping. And that's essentially it. We transformed our color space from our log C into Rec 709, which is pretty much exactly what we did uh, with the LUT. So it's essentially the same thing. Um, these are just the two methods to do it. So that right there is a really good start. And um, a lot of people get this wrong when they're just starting out. So this is really important to get right. And um, if you do this, then the rest is gonna be so much easier and you're already off to a great start. So let's go back to the white balance node for just a second. And the white balance here looks pretty good, but let's say, um, and by the way, this is where you change the temperature and the white balance. You go into here and you go into the two over here and then you got temp and tint. So let's say our footage was for some reason um, shot really bad and it looked like this and really had to fix the white balance. So a quick way to fix it would be to click on this icon down here on the left. And then you would want to look for um, something you know should be white. So let's say this um, air conditioning unit over there on the background. I'm going to click on that. And then you can see it just automatically fixed our white balance. And you can go ahead and just change it a little bit if you want it to look um, maybe more warm or whatever. Um, but essentially, this is just a really quick way of um, fixing your white balance. So just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, we don't really need it here for this footage because it was already shot uh, really well and the white balance was on point. So I'm not going to use that. So just make sure you fix it if you didn't get it right on camera. So let's move on to the next shot and I'm going to show you a few other things we can do here. So I'm going to go and select this clip. And um, basically, we already did the transformation into Rec. 709. And it's going to be the same for this footage. So instead of doing it all over again, uh, we're just going to go and search for that uh, initial grade we did. So I'm going to click on this clip by pressing on the scroll button. 
and it's just gonna paste the exact same node tree um, over to our new clip. So now we already have a Rex 109 footage and now we can start playing around with the colors a little bit. So I'm gonna create a new node and I'm gonna call it primaries. And you can see we have these color wheels over here. And I'm just going to push the gain, which is essentially the highlights, a little bit into the um, yellow kind of wall. So um, maybe something like that. And I'm gonna push the lift, which is the shadows, um, into the opposite direction. So I'm gonna add some blues into the shadows to balance it out. And we get something like this. So it just gives the image a little bit more of a look. And I think it's a little bit too warm. So I'm actually gonna go into the mid-tones and kind of offset that. So maybe something around there, oh, that looks pretty good to me. And on this grade, I'm gonna keep things pretty simple and clean. I'm not gonna go too crazy, but the primary wheels are a really powerful tool. So um, if you wanted to, you could really go crazy and push this um, a lot. But again, I'm just gonna keep it uh, pretty nice and simple for this grade. So now what we can also do is control um, individual colors. So I'm gonna create a new node and I'm gonna go into my curves. And here we have a few options, which is U versus U, U versus saturation, U versus luminance. So I'm just gonna go into U versus U and I'm going to pick the yellow over here. And if I drag up and down, you can see how it really changes all of the um, yellow tones. So I just wanna go for um, something like this maybe. And then I'll go into U versus saturation. I'm gonna pick the yellows again. And this would change the U that we selected, which is yellows. And we're gonna control the saturation for that color. So um, if I pull this up, you can see the yellow is really starting to become more dominant. And if I pull it down, we're taking yellow out. So because yellow is the artist brand color and this is an artist commercial, I really wanna give that yellow pop. So I'm gonna bring it up um, quite a bit. Maybe somewhere around here looks pretty good. So um, if I do before and after, you can see we really pushed it and um, we also affected the skin a lot which um, in this instance I pretty much like, but let's say uh, we wanted to change it. Um, what we could do is create a new parallel node using Alt-L. And now what we wanna do is actually just separate the skin. So we're gonna go into um, our qualifier over here and over here, and we're just gonna start clicking around um, on his skin and also make sure you click on this icon so we can see what we're selecting. So I'm just gonna see what works the best. And then we're gonna have to start messing around with all of the settings um, down here. So I'm just trying to get only his skin. And um, for some shots, this could take quite a while. So I'm just gonna do this really quick now. And the more time you spend on this, obviously, the more accurate the result will be. And you could also mess around with the noise and give it some blur, that always helps. So this is not the most perfect selection, but just for the sake of this tutorial and the sake of time, I'm gonna say that um, this is gonna be our selection. And um, another thing we can do is, you can see we selected the skin, but we're also getting um, a lot of the background and I don't wanna mess with the background. So what we could do is just go into the power windows over here and we're gonna select that and just um, center it on his face and body feather it out. And what we could do is actually also track this window. So DaVinci Resolve has a pretty amazing tracker. So I'm gonna go into the tracker over here. I'm gonna press um, track forward. And you can see it will pretty much perfectly track our face within seconds. So that's pretty amazing. And now we have a selection of our skin. You can see it here on the node. And what that means is we can now actually affect his skin separately from all of the other colors in the image. So whatever we do on this node is only going to affect his skin tones. So I'm gonna go into the log wheels this time. And the log wheels are more um, gentle, if you will. When you push things, it's not gonna push it as much as the primaries. So I'm gonna push some reds into the mid-tones because that will make the skin really pop and bring it to life. 
and maybe give it some teal highlights. Now, if you're not sure you have the right color on the skin tones, uh, what we could do is just pull up the scopes over here and I'm going to go into vector scope and I'm just going to um, click here so we can see our selection and let's just open up the menu and we're going to enable um, show skin tone indicator. So this line that you see right here is essentially where the skin tone should be. So you can see we have some color over here and it's right on that skin tone line. So that way we know we're pretty much good in that sense. So if I just uh, for a second mess on with the colors, you can see how now we move the color away from the skin tone line. And um, of course we can also just see with our eyes that this is not the right color for skin. But this um, skin tone line can really help you out sometimes if you're unsure. So um, just a quick tip. So this is also a very powerful technique you can do, which is just um, separating the skin. And you could also do this for anything else you would want to separate. So that could be really useful in tons of other situations. So I'm just going to label it skin. And this one was new versus. So again, before and after. So there's a lot more that we could do with this image, but I want to keep things pretty simple with this tutorial. So um, we're just going to end things up with a vignette. So um, create a new node. I'm going to call it vignette. And I'm going to go ahead and create a power window. Again, I'm going to feather this out. And I'm going to click here to basically reverse my selection. So now I'm only affecting what's outside the circle. So I'm going to go into my curves, um, into the custom curves, and I'm going to bring my shadows down. Not too much, maybe something like that. And if I do a before and after, you can see we now have a vignette around our actor and it's really drawing our eyes um, to him and it's looking really great. And what we can also do is just create the reverse of that and brighten it up. So I'm going to create a new node. So I'm just going to drag this little uh, blue square from the previous node and take it to this node. And it's basically just going to copy the same mask. And now what I want to do is go into the key and I'm just going to press on this thing. It's going to reverse our selection. So now I'm going to go into the curves and I'm just going to um, raise it up just a touch. And now you can see it just brightened up the center. So that's before and this is after. And if I take the two vignettes together, you can see how it's really powerfully um, centering our eyes on our actor, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So this is our final look. Let's do again a before and after. Um, this is the before and this is the after. So we did quite a lot, but we still kept it um, looking pretty natural. We didn't go too crazy, but we did use some of the most powerful tools on Resolve. So you could basically take those tools and um, really push it um, far, just experiment and see um, where it gets you with your footage. But that's it for the grading part. And now let's see how we can take our graded clips back into Premiere. So now that we have all of our clips graded, what we need to do is go into the deliver page over here. And we're gonna scroll through and go into Premiere XML. And I'm gonna choose the location. So I'm navigating into my color folder again, and I'm gonna call it Form Resolve. I'm going to click select and over here I'm going to go for um, DNX HD. I'm going to go into audio and I don't need any audio so I'm going to uh, uncheck this and then we're pretty much good to go. So I'm going to go into add to render queue. It's going to pop up um, right here on the render queue and I'm going to click on start render. So I'm in Premiere Pro again and I've opened a folder called color and I'm just going to go into file import. So I'm going to choose the XML file, I'm going to click open. And now what happened is that all of the graded clips have imported into this folder. And now what we need to do is find the sequence file. So I'm going to go for sequence. And once we open the sequence, it should have all of our graded footage right here. So some of the times you might run into some problems when exporting the XML back into Premiere. So um, if you can't figure it out, you can always just export one file from DaVinci and then 
um, cut it up yourself. Um, it's not the most ideal um, workflow going from Premiere into Resolve, but if you're like me and you're already used to Premiere Pro and maybe you're working with After Effects, then you're just gonna have to find a way to make this work. Just try it out for yourself and see which method um, works the best for you. Um, it's definitely not ideal, but um, that's currently the options. So that is all for this video. I really hope it helped you guys out. If it did, give this video a like and consider subscribing to never miss another one of our videos. And now let's talk about the giveaway. One of you guys could win a one-year music subscription to Artlist. All you have to do to enter is tell us down in the comments below what do you want us to talk about next. Here are the lucky winners from our last video's giveaway. Congratulations to you guys. Until the next time, stay creative. Yo!